Hi thinkers, welcome to the data structures in Java course on ThinkX Academy. This is module number three and in this module we are going to cover everything about Linklist. We are going to implement Linklist in Java also. So let's start with the first things first which is uh, how to create a Linklist and what are the advantages and disadvantages of Linklist. So the first thing is we are given some data. So here you can see that I've written that we are given this data 1, 12, 5, 6 and 7. So this data is what we want to allocate in the memory. We have studied about arrays in arrays. What we do is we allocate them in continuous manner, but that has some disadvantages. Now we're going to study linked list, which stores the data in uncontinuous fashion inside of the main memory. So I'm going to write here uncontinuous manner. So here you can see a structure of main memory, which I've drawn here. Now you can see these dotted lines. These lines actually mean that the main memory is actually very large and we are just considering a chunk of that whole memory. And here you can see that I have also assigned in the green color, the memory addresses of each and every block, because we know that every location, every single block in the main memory has a particular memory address. Now you can see here that this data that we are given, I have allocated them at random locations inside the main memory. So it is uncontinuous and it is also stored in random locations inside of the memory. Now, this is a very important thing here because here you can see that uh, if they are stored in uh, in random locations, there must be some way to actually access them in order. So let's say after one, we want to access 12. Then after 12, I actually want to access five. Then after five, I want to access six and then seven. So how can we do that? That is done using memory references. So I'm going to write here, we are going to create memory references to actually make pointers or point to the next location that we want in our data structure, which is the linked list. So linked list start, uh, let's start with the first element and let's try to uh, draw a linear architecture of linked list. Now remember that every data structure gets stored inside of the main memory. So you need to understand how the data and how the memory references are working in case of every type of data structure. Now let's draw a linear uh, diagram of this. So the first data is one. So I'm going to write one here and I will create a box here, which means that it is stored inside this memory. What is the next data? The next data is 12. Now you can see that 12 is stored here, which is at the location 2001. So 12 is here and it is the next element of our data structure. But the idea here is how can I actually make sure that after one 12 is accessed. Now what I do is one is actually at the location 2001 sorry one is at location 2003 so I'm going to write here that one is at 2003 and I'm going to make sure that this 12 is at 2001 so I'm going to leave some gap here right so 12 will be here all right so how can I access this element 12 after one I want to go to 12 so the idea here is very simple we are going to store one more uh, data or one more information here with one I'm going to store the memory address of the next element and this is very important because that's how we can obtain a linked list so linked list means the list of data that are linked together using memory references now you can see here that I actually have assigned the memory addresses using the green marker and I will use the red marker to actually tell that you know what after one the next element is at location 2001 so what this actually means is I am actually trying to create a memory reference to this location. So after one, the element at the location 2001 will be accessed, which is 12. Similarly, I want to assign five also. So let's draw five here. So I will quickly draw five here and we know that five is at the memory location 2005. So I'm going to write here that it is at 2005 location. Right. And the question again here is how can I access the element five after 12? The answer is same here. We are going to store a memory reference to the location 2005 here with this data. Right. So we actually need to maintain two information. The first one is the data itself. And the second information is the location or the memory reference to the next location. Right. And we will keep doing that and we will keep we will keep linking all the elements of the data. So six will get also linked here. And similarly, seven will get also linked here. And we are going to use the same strategy to link the elements. 
So here you can see that after one, one contains a memory reference of 2001. So two after this, it will go here. So the next element is 12. After 12, the next element is five. So from here, it will go like this. And this will keep going on and we have obtained a data structure which is linked together. Now, what is the idea? Why are we doing these much efforts and why are we storing them at random locations? What are the advantages of this? Now, in array, we have studied that the data was stored continuously. In that case, once we have created a data inside of an array, the size of the array will remain fixed, which means we do not have the ability to extend or shrink the array. So let's say if I create an array of five elements, it is fixed. You cannot create six elements. For that, we will have to create another array of six uh, elements and store them. But here we have the ability to uh, increase the linked list as much as I want. What I just need to do is give the data and a pointer or a memory reference to the next location. So that is a very big advantage here, the ability to extend and shrink the data structure. The second one is the concept of deletion. We know the array size is fixed. So once we have created, it is going to take memory location. And we know that memory is a very important resource for us. So what we are going to do is, let's say I want to delete six here, right? If I want to delete six from this data structure, I can actually deallocate this node here and I can change the reference from five to seven. So in this way, six will get deleted uh, permanently from the main memory and that uh, will create a very free space here, which can be occupied by some other processes or some other data. So this provides very two convenient features and these are very important when we want to access a, uh, any element inside of a linked list, we can delete and we can shrink the elements also. So that's why it is better than array. What is the time complexity of traversing in this linked list? The time complexity will be big O of n because we are actually going from one position to another. So we are actually making n number of accesses. We will study that how we can actually perform insertion in the middle of the linked list, then at the end of the linked list, and also at the start of the linked list. One important point here is how do we know that the linked list is starting from which position? So the idea is we create a position, we create a pointer or a memory reference, and we call it a head pointer. And this head pointer actually stores the location of the first element, which you can see here is 2003. So I'm going to write here that the memory location is 2003 here. So the link list starts from this head position and it says that the element is stored at 2003 position, which is first here. Then the, after first we have 2001, so 12 will be accessed and similarly, the whole link list will go on like this. Now the question is the last element will have no particular reference. For that, we are going to assign it to the null reference. The question now here is how can we actually implement in Java? So we are going to, we need two important steps to perform. The first step is to create a node or create, right? The first step is to create a node and the second step is to link all the nodes. So what is a node, right? A node is basically a data. So we can consider this whole box here, this bigger box here, we can consider it as a node. And this node will have two things. One is the data and the second is a reference to the next data. So we can call this that it has two things. So a node will have two things. The first thing is the data itself. And the second thing is memory reference to the next pointer. And we are going to call it as a next because it is a variable which points to the next item of the linked list. So this is the basic idea of linked list. Now I will uh, quickly show you how we can create a node in link and uh, we can link all the nodes. So in Java, what we can do is we know that Java is object oriented programming language. So we can use the idea of objects to actually allocate and to provide the referencing. So the first question is, how do I allocate data? The idea is very simple. I will cre create a class node, right? I will simply create a class node here. So if I create a class node, it will not get allocated in the memory. It will only get allocated when I will create an object of this class, right? So what are the two things that I need to store inside the object of node? The node object will have integer data and it will also have a memory reference to the next object. Now the question is how can we create a memory reference to the next object? Now in Java pointers are not there. 
So is there any ability to create object references? So you can see that this is an object, right? We can treat it as an object and we can treat this one also as, as an object. So is there any way to reference this object? The answer is yes. Now here, let's consider a very simple example. Let's say we have a class A and I create an object of this class using the new pointer, right? So observe this line. This is a very important line in Java and it teaches two very important things. The first thing is this new operator. So this new is actually used to allocate the properties, the whole object in the main memory, right? So this is actually used to instantiate, right? So I'm going to write here, this is used to instantiate. Instantiation means that we are allocating the object in the main memory, right? So we are instantiating the object. So this part of this whole line, this part actually represents that we are allocating the object in the memory. So what is this part? You can see that obg is a variable and it is actually a reference to the object which is stored at this memory location. So whenever you create an object, you do that using the new operator. And once it is allocated, we want a reference to that object and that reference is actually represented here. So you can see that a obj is actually a reference to this new object, right? Now, if I want a reference to a null object or a null location, I can simply do this, right? It means that this is a reference to a null position. Similarly, if I have other objects, like if I want to uh, create a reference to this object, I will just write the part here. So this is one important idea that you need to remember. And that's what we are going to use here, right? So we want a next pointer. So we will create a new uh, node next variable. And initially it will have no assignment, right? It is just a reference. So you can see that it is just a reference. There is no new operator or null. Now each and every node will have data and the next pointer. Now you can see that at this position, we don't know what is the next element. So we need to actually make sure that this next is actually pointing to null initially. And after that, we can actually assign it to the different objects of the linked list. How can we do that? We can simply create a constructor here, right? So I'm just going to remove this part because I think that this is explanatory now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a constructor, right? This is the constructor in the constructor. I will get some data. Let's say we have int D as the data. So what are we going to do? We are going to assign the data of this object. So I will assign this dot data is equals to D. Now note here that this means that this is a keyword and it is used to actually give a reference to any particular property of the object. So whenever I will create an object of this node class, I'm actually accessing the data of only that object, right? Because we are going to manage a lot of objects. We, we want to actually access the property data of the object that we have created at certain uh, point in time, right? So once we have done that, the next part is this dot next is equals to null, right? So this is the constructor. And this is the whole class. The class has two important variables, data and next. And this constructor actually initializes, or you can say it gives the value. So whenever you are going to create an object, what will happen? Let's say I write in a point here that node object equals to new node. So what is the first data? First data is one here. So I'm going to supply one here. This will automatically call this constructor node. Data D will have a value of one. So this dot data means that the data of this class will be actually equal to one and it will get allocated because we know that whenever we uh, instantiate a class, this dot data means that the data inside of the main memory will have uh, this particular value, which is one. So the object node is allocated now at this position, it is allocated inside the main memory and the property data of this class is actually assigned to one. The next property of the class is this next variable. So this object, which is obj, right, it will have this as null. So it is initially pointing to a null value. So in this uh, fashion, we can create any number of objects we want. We can actually create another object, which is obj2 equals to new node. And the next node is 12 here. So I can say that 12 will be here. And similarly, another node will be created, which is 12 and it will be pointing to null. So this is the first step, which is how to create a node inside of Java. So we will write this program in Java in a, uh, in this, in the second part of the tutorial, but here I'm trying to tell you and teach you the main concept behind these programs, because it is 
crucial to understand that you focus on each and every part of this program or else you will miss the important concepts right so this is how we create now the second part is to link these nodes right so i want to link ob object which is here to the object too right so this is our object obj and this is actually obj1 so what i want to do is i want to assign the next pointer of this obj to the next to the obj right so how can we do that we can do that very easily what i will do is i will reassign the next pointer of obj right so obj is the object then we are going to access the property next using this dot pointer it will call this next property and how i'm going to assign it the same way we were assigning the memory references to the new allocated node we are going to assign it to this obj2 right so it is a very simple strategy so what this will do is it will link the node 1 with the node 12 and the 12 which is the obj2 is actually having the value null if i want to add more objects i can keep writing this line and this will keep linking the nodes so this line here is very important because it actually assigns or links two nodes right the first node is obj and the second node is obj2 so we are assigning the next of obj to obj2 and these are actually the object references so this is how we can keep going on like this and we'll keep assigning now concentrate on these pointers and how these memory references are assigned because when we will perform deletion of elements of insertion at the start or end we can actually do that right there is one more important step here the first node of every uh, linked list is a head pointer so what i will do is i will create a linked list class and i will create a very simple pointer which will be a head pointer which is node head and it will it will actually point to the first object and we know that the first object of our linked list is obj right so node head equals to obj now we can start from the head position and we will keep traversing through the linked list until and unless we reaches a null a position where the next pointer is pointing to null that's how we can perform traversal also and we will see all of these concepts and we will implement uh, more and more examples and questions on linked list in the upcoming tutorials and you will understand it in much better way so that's all for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.